Hey everyone, I'm Chris Joyce, founder and CEO of Gusher, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to start a startup with just an idea. No investors, no money needed, all right? Now I'm working from home today because of COVID-19 like a lot of you. So if a screaming kid appears out of nowhere, my apologies, but the probability is extremely high. Can you tell I've said that about 10,000 times since March of last year? All right, real quickly, let's go ahead and hit the ground running. We've got a short amount of time to cover a lot of stuff, only about 20, 25 minutes, and I can't cover everything, but I'm hoping to go ahead and give you a good amount of information and some background and a taste of how to go about doing this. And I say also, if you do have any questions, always reach out to me. We're happy to help in any way to go ahead and take care of you, okay? So real quickly, I founded 24 companies in all different verticals. I, my products, my physical products, have been sold in more than 11,000 stores in 23 countries, and I have users of my tech products in more than 148 countries across the globe. Now, I've been starting companies since I was a kid. I've always loved creating businesses. I've always loved doing business. And some of these businesses have grown pretty damn big, some not so big. And every now and then, one didn't work at all, although extremely rarely, okay? So I've created manufacturing, consumer goods, medical device, tech, and many other types of companies. And I never really needed money to actually get them started, to get them out the gates. And over the course of my career, as time passed, I saw a lot of entrepreneurs unable to bring their ideas to life, unable to really get it out of their head. And I saw them fail really over and over and over because they thought they needed money. You don't need money. And the chances of getting funded, and this is one thing that most founders or would-be entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs don't really follow, the chances of getting funding is extremely low. Only about one in 700 entrepreneurs actually gets any real funding whatsoever. So that kind of got me thinking. I knew there was a solution, a way that really didn't need money or investors. So what I decided to do is to create a company to really help these founders, to help these entrepreneurs and show them the way of how to create and launch startups without money, without investors, okay? And so I created Gusher, and we actually gushered Gusher, without money, without investors. We drink our own Kool-Aid, okay? And we now have hundreds of companies with founders all across the globe building and creating companies without the need for money, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and share a slide deck with you, some information, some images here, and I hate slide decks, but we'll see if we can get that going. I hate pitch decks. I'm actually anti-pitch deck. So let me see if I can bring it up. Just bear with me a second here as we get it going. And we'll get you guys going, all right? So right now, you should see something that says, so how was Gusher born? What is the way, all right? So real quickly, I'm going to ask you a quick question. You know the answer already. What's the biggest barrier to creating a startup? And you're going to say money, all right? Here's the next question, though. What's the number one thing that money is used for? When I'm in front of a live audience, in front of a crowd, you start hearing all these different things. Somebody hits it right off the bat. People, all right? People is usually your number one cost for almost any type of company that you create from the very beginning, okay? Now, what I'm going to show you is how to create and launch companies without the need for money, all right? So how do we do this? I'm not going to tell you yet, all right? What I'm going to do is I want to paint a picture for you as some use cases so you have an understanding of the scope of what you can do with creating a company, creating a startup without having a penny behind your name, really, okay? So one of the use cases I always talk about is Colin. Colin actually had a sick dog. The dog wouldn't eat. He tried all these different dog foods out there, and he decided to try to create his own dog food. Lo and behold, the dog ate the food, the dog got healthy, and he said, hey, I think that I should create a dog food company, and he didn't have any money, he didn't have any investors, and so he was able to do it. He was able to create a company called Happy Howl. You'll hear about them soon. They're taking off like a rocket, and I want you to pay attention to this image right here because I'm going to bring it up later. It's going to be kind of important, okay? 
Tino, Tino had a revolutionary idea, has, I should say, for furniture manufacturing. Tino, Tino didn't have any money or investors at all. He was able to put this team together. Baru is kicking butt right now. Their sales, month over sales over sales, keeps increasing. They're expanding. They're available nationally, soon to go international. Great guy. Derry, interesting story. Derry came to the U.S., quite literally from Africa with a hundred bucks in his pocket. He spent 50 of that hundred dollars on a taxi cab going from Chicago O'Hare to wherever he was supposed to go, gets to the house where they promptly tell him, you can't stay here. So here's a guy from Africa into the U.S., 50 bucks in his pocket, wants to go ahead and revolutionize the retail sales processes. i go into that some other time as to what the exact deal is. No money, no investors. He was able to do it utilizing the exact methods I'm going to cover shortly with you. Got a great team. He's off to the races doing phenomenally. Okay. So how do you do it? I'm not telling you yet. Greg. Greg is a really cool guy. I actually met him in the middle of Wisconsin during a snowstorm at something like 10 o'clock at night in a hotel lobby. We talked for hours upon hours. Greg is an extremely smart inventor, like crazy smart. He was previously backed by serious private equity dollars. They came into the company, took a substantial position in it, and guess what they did? They gave him the boot. They kicked him out of his own damn company. And believe it or not, that happens a lot with investors, so you want to watch out for it. But at that point in time, he didn't want to deal with investors at all, and he didn't have any money. He didn't have any additional capital there. So he was able to go ahead and gusher his company, utilize it without any type of capital whatsoever. He's got a rock star team and they're off to the races. This is another great case here, okay? Kitty, Kitty is a grandmother in South Africa. She created this neat invention, a new type of garment to basically eliminate skin wrinkles. And she has no money, no investors, no opportunity located where she is, being in the middle of absolutely nowhere. And let me tell you something, Kitty has almost no computer savvy. She doesn't have the sophistication or the, ta I the skill set, I should say, on using a computer. I just want to paint the picture for you. She's got a company. It's cranking. Her first products are being released this quarter. She's actually kicking butt. Michael, Michael, this is happening to a lot of people as a result of COVID-19. He was laid off. He was fired. He was terminated. He was canned. He was given the boot. But guess what? He always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Didn't have money. Didn't have investors. Rockstar team created a company called Tailhand. They're off to the races. Their products should be releasing coming up in the next two quarters. They're crushing it. So again, how? Still not going to tell you, but this one's important, but we're coming to the end very, very soon in terms of this, okay? Atif. Atif is one of the top emergency room doctors in New Jersey, okay? He had a neat idea, and pay attention to this one also, okay? He had a neat idea for going ahead and creating a new type of software that addressed cardiac arrests, heart attacks in the emergency room, okay? Didn't know where to start, didn't know what to do, et cetera. He's doing the exact same methods I'm about to cover with you right now, okay? Got a phenomenal team, off to the races, company is crushing it, all right? Guillaume, Guillaume in France, okay? His, his family has run this very large, not large scale, but a good sized business for a long time. He doesn't want to be a part of it at all. I don't want to say he's the black sheep of, the, of his uh, family. For all I know, he's great, but I, there's something there in terms of that he didn't want to be involved with it at all. His family didn't like this in terms of what he was doing. And Guillaume didn't have any investors or money, but he had an idea, a passion that he wanted to pursue. He, again, also has a rock star team, a phenomenal team, and they're crushing it. And they're doing it with the exact same methods that I'm telling you with Zero, with Nada, with Zippo. Okay, Matt. College student, graduate engineering student, wanted to go ahead and do something in the sustainable area, create a new type of sustainable, functional food company. No investors, no know-how. His pros on his team are insanely high. He's got a phenomenal company. They're taking off like a rocket. You'll hear about them soon. So again, how do you do it? Bear with me. We're almost there, okay? Ari, Ari wanted to revolutionize neuroscience mindfulness. He dealt with, I think, and I maybe he's misspeaking here, but a lot of migraines in terms of childhood. He was looking for a way, a better way of dealing with it, created a new gamification system to be able to handle it. No money, no investors. Ari, phenomenal team. Product gets developed, investors in the pipeline and crushing it. 
So this is my final case scenario, use case scenario, okay? Rob and Charles. Rob and Charles, they had started companies before. They've, they've definitely been around the block, but they wanted to start it in a fundamentally different way, and they understood what we were talking about, okay? They literally have done three companies simultaneously. So even if you're a serial entrepreneur bug, whatever it may be, you can do multiple companies simultaneously with zero dollars, okay? His team, this is a small portion of it. They actually have gargantuan teams that are kicking butt and moving forward, okay? So the main gist of where we're going is that talent is spread evenly, but opportunity is not. And what I'm going to show you here is really that addresses it, that fixes it. This goes ahead and helps you out, okay? So what I normally say to founders right off the bat is if you had a million dollars, if you had $2 million in your checking account right this second, okay, who would you have on your team? How would you build your company? And then do that because using this methodology, you can do it, all right? We do it all day, every day in all different industries from B2B, B2C, B2B to C, and quite literally everything in between. Whether it's SaaS, tech, fintech, medical devices, consumer goods, manufacturing, AR, VR, whatever it may be, gaming, uh, we're having a lot of gaming companies, you can utilize the exact same methodology that I'm about to show you here, and it doesn't cost you a penny. You don't need angel investors. You don't need VCs. You don't need anyone. All right. So how does this work? All right. Read this. Startups are funded or created using performance-based equity. Let me say it again. Startups are funded or created using performance-based equity. So what happens is people apply to join your company at usually the early stages, but we also have companies now that are coming in with VC rounds that are actually looking to extend their runway, doing the exact same thing with us, okay? And so what happens is people work in exchange for equity or the equity award. And nobody gets a damn thing in your company unless these goals are accomplished, whatever it is, including us. We're a performance-based player also, okay? So the process is create, recruit, develop, and launch, okay? You're going to create the startup. You're going to recruit the team. You're going to develop the product, and you're going to launch the company. Without money, without investors, without needing anyone else other than the talented people that are going to help you build the company. You don't need a penny. All right. So real quickly, bear with me just a second. I want to shift screens here. All right. So we can be on the same page. Bear with me. With the creation side of it, okay, we could spend literally hours talking about the creation, all right? And anything that I'm going to go in here in the next, we have less than about 10 minutes to cover this, all right? You can find it at gusher.co. Everything is there. It's free. Uh, we help you out. We talk with you. We do whatever's needed to help you get going. There's no charge or anything like that, okay? But the creation side, I'm not going to go in depth on, all right? But the key is there's really a couple keys here. It's really primarily the pitch. So when I talk about pitch, there's three different types of pitches, okay? One is pitch to investors. I'm not talking about that. The second is really the pitch to your end users, the consumer, the purchasers of your product, your service. Not talking about that at all. What I'm talking about when we say pitch is the pitch to recruit your team. And the pitch to recruit your team has really specific details that need to be done there in a certain way in order for it to be effective. Otherwise, you're not going to get a team. And what we found works really simply and most effectively is what we call problem solution market. OK, you explain the problem in one sentence, maybe two. If you can't explain the problem in one or two sentences, most your chances of getting a team is extremely low. All right. You have to take the time out and actually make that simple and have a clear cut problem as to what you're trying to achieve. OK. The solution, solution should also be clear cut. One or two sentences max, you should actually see something there, but you don't actually have to have a solution, okay? You just may need a pathway to it. The whole point of bringing people into your company and actually creating it is to go ahead and have their brain power behind it to hopefully come up with perhaps an even better solution than what you're looking to do. So you don't necessarily need that solution all 
finished and mapped out, just a quick sentence or two maybe as to the pathway of what it is. And then you want to have something in terms of the market size, the total available market, what you think it is. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but there needs to be something there to help paint that picture in the beginning stages to help with the recruiting process, okay? So we've only got about five minutes here. I'm going to cover recruiting really quickly, okay? So why am I covering recruiting? Because recruiting quite literally is the toughest part of creating a startup with absolutely no money, no capital, and using just an idea, all right? This is where companies live or die doing performance-based equity startups, okay? Now, we have a saying on Gusher that one plus one does not equal two, okay? One plus one equals done. What do I mean by that? If you go ahead and create an equity-based startup, okay, and you're able to bring one person, just one person into your team for performance-based equity, okay, your chances of success skyrocket. That's where we have an 80% plus success rate in terms of companies, and that's why. You're able to get that first person in, the rest of the team follows, and then you're off to the races, and then everything starts taking off, okay? Now, if you remember when I told you to pay attention to a couple slides, if you remember, I want to give you two quick scenarios to paint a picture for you, okay, as to how to do this and what is the most important. In that first one, I was talking to you about Colin, okay? Colin created this dog food company. What I don't show there on those slides and in the initial story is that when Colin first created his team, it did not work out, all right? He went ahead and brought people on that had run $100 million, $200 million budgets. Six weeks later, it blew up. That team didn't work, and it failed miserably. But his second team all had something in common, and it took off like a rocket. Now, this is not a trick question. This is a dog food company. You saw the actual image in the slide. What did they all have in common that actually made this company take off like a rocket. Yes, they were dog owners, but they weren't just dog owners, okay? They were what really I call dog zealots. They didn't have children, they had dogs. They eat, breathed, lived, slept, and pooped dogs. They were dogs hardcore, okay? Now, another example of where I'm going is Atif. If you remember Atif with the cardiac side, the software for the use of cardiac in an emergency room, okay? Now, when he first was utilizing this method, he heard crickets. He heard nothing, absolutely nothing. But then we talked and we started figuring out, you know, who had the most to gain with this, what's called the VIM, the vested interest market. If there's one thing I hope you leave today, it's understanding VIM because it can affect your business at any stage, whether it is future investors, sales validation, or putting a team together for performance-based equity, okay? So Atif, we were figuring out what his VIM was. With Colin, it's black and white. It's these zealot dog owners, okay? But with Atif, guess who came into his company first, okay? Guess how these people did it? Not a trick question, but a little bit more difficult. And again, it's for a software for cardiac arrest in an emergency room, okay? This specialty type of software. First person that came on, his mother was a cardiac nurse. So he had been immersed in this since the time he was a kid. The second person that came on had actually uh, programmed the software for medical devices. The third person that came on into the company was a person that had sold SaaS and software systems into hospitals, into HMOs. So they all had a vested interest. They all had an understanding of what this deal was about, okay? So what that leads to is when you're dealing with the VIM, the vested interest market, and you understand that, what happens is, and we're coming down to just a couple minutes here, that recruiting for a performance-based equity company, a startup, without having a penny in, in your pocket, is that it's really dating, okay? It's not transactional. It's not like it's just a standard hiring process, okay? And there's a couple things you must do while recruiting. There's actually a lot of things which we cover, but I'm limited time here, all right? First thing, it needs to be done face-to-face, -face, not email, not texting, none of that BS. You can and have to use, obviously, video, but it's got to be live. It's got to be a condition that there's face-to-face. -face. That's number one. Number two, you need to talk 
with the person. You need to see if there's a common ground, a, a common philosophy there. And the best way to get to that, and I hope you remember this, the Vim and this next thing I'm about to cover, if anything, is always ask the question. So what's the question? The question is the following, and you should ask pretty much anyone when you're first meeting them this, if you want a deeper relationship, okay? But especially with recruiting, all right? Why do you do what you do? Why did they become X? Why do you do what you do? And the reason you ask this question is because it's quite literally the blueprint, the Rosetta Stone for talking with them if they answer openly. And if they don't answer openly, well, that tells you a hell of a lot right there. But always ask that question, especially during recruiting and especially with the capital raise process on whoever the other person is that you're trying to get capital from, because it'll go ahead and open doors wildly. Okay. Now we're at about 20 minutes here and I know I'm going to get cut off in just a minute or two, but there's something called the deal rules that I talk about a lot. And these deal rules, and I'm happy to go ahead and give you a copy for free. If you reach out to me on LinkedIn, in or at gusher.co. I'm happy to give you a free copy of it. But there's some deal rules that apply, especially with startups and companies. And that's something that's really important, especially with this. Okay. Deal rule number one, and it's deal rule number one for a reason, is the following. If a person is not key to a deal, they cannot be involved in the deal. OK, if a person is not key to a deal, they cannot be involved in the deal. A person cannot under any condition be involved in the deal unless they are key to the success of that deal. So what do I mean by that? I mean the following. OK, don't include your brother. Don't include your mother. Don't include your friend from college, your attorney or any people not involved on a day to day basis in the success or failure of your company. Now I could spend a good 10, 15 minutes just explaining this, but I'm gonna move on to another deal rule that's also insanely important, okay? And that's deal rule six. Deal rule six is listen to red flags, they are objective, okay? Now here's the, the thing, okay? When you're doing a performance-based equity deal, a startup, all right, there's certain red flags. One of them is, and you may not believe this, all right, but we've tracked it, is that if somebody shows up to a video call in the beginning stages, a video meeting late, even one minute, you do not do business with them whatsoever. And the reason is the following. We've actually tracked this. Let's say you're starting out like this. You're in parallel, okay? But that person is off by just a little bit. Three months down the line, six months down the line, they are quite literally in another country, in another part of the globe, in another part of the universe, because you're just off in terms of belief structure, in terms of philosophy, in terms of your standards. And that's insanely, insanely important. OK, last rule I'm going to cover is deal rule 20. All right. And it goes the following and it has to do specifically with this. All right. Bear with me. Good deal first, money second. Good deal first, money second. You see, money never precedes a good deal. A good deal comes first always and then the money. If money comes first, the deals formed as a result are always second rate, okay? Good deal first, money second. Good deal first, money second. You don't need money. I hope I've demonstrated a little bit of that right now. I, didn't, I know I did, couldn't go into too much technique, because we don't have much time, uh, but you do not need money. You just need an idea, okay? So we've got a Q&A coming up. I hope you join me on that. If you have any questions, please definitely reach out. If you want a free copy of the deal rules, also just reach out. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can put something up here, but you can actually just reach out to me in terms of on LinkedIn, you can find me anywhere, or you can go ahead and go to gusher.co and you can definitely find me there. But if you want any help or anything else, we're happy to go ahead and help you. If you have any questions with the Q&A, just reach out anytime. And I just want to thank you again for your time. It's been an honor. It's been a privilege. And if I can help you out in any way, definitely reach out. But you do not need money. All you need is an idea, a process, and the will to make it happen. And we're here to go ahead and help you out. Have a great day, guys. See you soon.